Here's the cool question, which tests your ability to quickly come up with the answers. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? And you have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. And choice D, Saturday. Do you see the answer? Think again. These types of puzzles might require you to do some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and get us to the correct solution together. To solve these types of problems, we need to analyze them and do them in reverse. Four days before Monday is Thursday, and the day before day before Thursday is Tuesday. If tomorrow is Tuesday, it means that today is Monday. So the correct answer here is choice B, Monday. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar puzzles on the test. It is almost guaranteed that you will get question like this on every test. You're presented with the sequence of numbers and you need to determine the next number in the sequence. In this case, the numbers are 2, 10, 30, 68, 130, and the next number is missing. Can you determine what comes next in the sequence? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 216. Choice B, 218. Choice C, 220. And choice D, 222. Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. That's about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not, I'm moving forward so we can get to the correct solution together. When dealing with sequence questions, my recommendation to you is always look for patterns. And to determine the answer in this case, we need to use the pattern n cube plus n. So it starts with the first number, which is equal to, and it was calculated as 1 cube plus 1 equals 2. Next number was calculated as 2 cube plus 2 equals 10. The following number was calculated as 3 cube plus 3 equals 30. Then 4 cube plus 4 equals 68. 5 cube plus 5 equals 130, which means that the missing number should be calculated as 6 cubed plus 6, and the result would be equal 222. So the correct answer here is choice D, 222. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is an interesting question which tests your knowledge of math. Zach's and Nick's dorms are 15 miles apart. How much time passes till they meet? If Zach leaves his dorm biking 12 miles per hour toward Nick's dorm and Nick leaves his dorm at the same time running toward Zach's dorm at 8 miles per hour. You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 15 minutes. Choice B, 30 minutes. Choice C, 45 minutes. And choice D, 60 minutes. Do you see the answer? Can you calculate it? Give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Ready or not, we are moving forward and I'll show you how to solve these types of problems on the test. As you might be well aware, distance is calculated as multiplication of speed and time. So we will create a formula D equals S multiplied by T. What's interesting about this particular problem is that it's a little trickier because we got two speeds. One is Zach's speed and second one is Nick's speed. So Zach is moving at the speed of 12 miles per hour and Nick is moving at the speed of 8 miles per hour. It is still solvable, but it means that we would need to build two expressions instead of one. So expression for Zach's distance is D1, which is Zach's distance, equal 12 multiplied by T equals 12T. An expression for Nick's distance would be distance 2 equals 8 multiplied by t, which would be equal 8t. 
because Zach and Nick meet somewhere in between their dorms, we can also build an expression that D1 plus D2 equals D, which is a total distance between their dorms. Now we can do some substitutions and we can say that 12T plus 8T equals 15. And 15 is a distance between Zach's and Nick's dorms, which means that 20T equals 15 after simplification, which means that T equals 15 divided by 20 and is measured in hours, which is 3 fourths of an hour. And 3 fourths of an hour is 45 minutes. So the correct choice here is choice C, 45 minutes. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar problems on the test. Here's the puzzling question that you might frequently see on the test. The sum of all the ages of four family members is 85. What would be the sum of their ages together in five years? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 90. Choice B, 95. Choice C, 100. And choice D, 105. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I'm moving forward to get to the correct solution together. What's interesting about this problem is that it is simpler than you think. So the key here is not to overthink the problem. There are four family members and some of their ages is 85. And in five years, each family member will be five years older. So incremental age increase for all family members can be calculated as four, four family members multiplied by five, five years equals 20 years. So some of the ages of all family members in five years can be calculated as 85, which is original sum, plus 20, which is the incremental age increase and would be equal to 105. So the correct choice here is choice D, 105. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar puzzles on the test. Here's an amazing question which tests your ability to quickly come up with the solutions. You're presented with three squares. Each square is of a different color and each square has numbers in the corner as well as the number in the middle. For example, brown square has numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 in the corners and number 100 in the middle. Dark blue square has numbers 3, 2, 2, 7 in the corners as well as number 196 in the middle. And light blue square has numbers 4, 6, 1 and 5 in the corners and number in the middle in the square is missing. You have four different choices to calculate missing number. Choice A, 244. Choice B, 250. Choice C, 256. And choice D, 262. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds by pausing this video and trying to calculate the missing number. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead and move forward so we can get to the correct solution together. As usual, to solve any challenge, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And then the pattern here is that the middle number inside the square is calculated as the square of sum of smaller numbers in the corners. Let me explain. Let's take the brown square. We have numbers in the corners 1, 2, 4 and 3. The sum of 1, 2, 3 and 4 is 10 and 10 square is 100 and this is how 100 was calculated. The next one is the dark blue square. The sum of 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 7 equals 14 and 14 square is 196. And now the light blue square has the sum of numbers equal 16 because 4 plus 6 plus 1 and plus 5 equals 16 and 16 square is 256. So the answer here is choice C, 256. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very interesting problem 
that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the practice problem for you. You're presented with the chart that shows average price of cryptocurrency. And this chart shows the average price for each month from January to May. You need to calculate what is the highest approximate percentage price increase between two consecutive months. And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 60%. Choice B, 70%. Choice C, 80%. And choice D, 90%. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you the feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's a cool question which you frequently see on the test. You're presented with two cubes. One cube has side length equal one unit and second cube is a larger cube and it has side length equals three units. So the question is how many small cubes can fit into the large cube and you have four different choices. Choice A, nine, choice B, 18, choice C, 27, and choice D, 81. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a few moments to calculate it, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, you need to visually imagine how many small cubes can fit into one side of the larger cube. And the answer is that three small cubes can fit on each side of the large cube. And since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. Three multiplied by three multiplied by three, which is equal three cube. That's where the word cube might be coming from which equals 27. Since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. Three multiplied by three multiplied by three equals three cube equals 27. So the correct choice here is choice C, 27. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting question you may need to know not just for the test, but also if you're trying to rent the house. Five college students together rented a house. One of them decided to move out earlier, and now their rent would be $260 higher for each remaining tenant. What is the cost of the total rent, considering the rent is shared equally among students? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $5,200. Choice B, $3,120. Choice C, $2,600. And choice D, $2,340. Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. One of the easiest way to solve this challenge is to create a formula. 
Let's start by defining a variable. And we will define this variable as s, which would represent an initial split rent for five students. So, using this formula, we can calculate the total house rent as 5 multiplied by s, which means that after one student left, the total house rent could also be calculated as 4 multiplied and then the value in parentheses s plus $260. Using both approaches, we can create an expression. 5 multiplied by s equals 4 multiplied and then the value in parentheses s plus $260. Once we simplify it, we'll get to the equation 5s minus 4s equals $1,040, which means that the s equals $1,040, which represents initial one student rent. To calculate total house rent, we need to multiply 5 by $1,040 and the result will be $5,200. So the answer is choice A, $5,200. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar. Here is an interesting question which validates how well you do planning of your day-to-day -day work. Mary spends one-third of her 24-hour day at work. Meetings take one-fourth of her workday. How many hours does she spend in meetings? You have four different choices. Choice A, one hour and 30 minutes. Choice B, two hours. Choice C, two hours and 30 minutes. And choice D, three hours. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe a bit longer, depending how well you typically solve these types of problems. Ready or not, let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. As you might be well aware, full day has 24 hours. Mary's working hours are very typical. They represent one third of the full day which is 8 hours, and we calculate it by multiplying 24 by one-third, or actually dividing 24 by 3. Meetings take one-fourth of her workday. So to calculate how much time she spends in meetings, we need to multiply 8 hours by one-fourth, and the result is 2 hours. So the correct answer is choice B, 2 hours. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's one of my favorite questions, and it is my favorite because it is so unusual. You are presented with the pyramid. Pyramid contains five different layers. If we go from the top to bottom, you have a question mark. This is the number that you need to uncover. The next layer contains numbers 24 and 28. Layer below this contains numbers 10, 12, and 14. Next layer has 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the last layer has numbers 3, 1, 4, 2, and 5. You're presented with four different choices for the missing number. Choice A, 55. Choice B, 56. Choice C, 57. And choice D, 60. Do you see the answer? You will be surprised how simple it is to get to the answer when we go to the next step. Give yourself 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds to see if you can calculate and get to the correct answer. Did you figure it out? Let's continue and see how we can get to the correct solution together. Well, here, to be honest, I tried to trick you. I went in describing numbers from top to bottom, but in reality, you should be looking at the numbers from bottom to the top. If we start from the bottom row, for example, with numbers 3 and 1, you see that the sum of 3 and 1 will add up to 4. But then it gets trickier. If we go from the second row to the third row, you see that the 4 and 5 does not necessarily add up in 10. 4 and 5 adds up in 9, and then you need to increment it by 1. If you go to the next layer, you need to increment it by 2. And then in the final row, you need to increment it by 3. So the correct answer here is choice 55. Let's recap. Starting with the bottom row, the sum of two squares results in the number in the next row. For example, 2 plus 5 equals 7. However, as each level continues, the sum increases by 1. For example, 4 plus 5, we need to increment and add 1 to get to 10. So the answer is calculated by adding up 24 plus 28 plus 3 
which would be equal to 52 plus 3 and would be equal to 55. The correct answer here is choice A, 55. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.